Thank you for tuning in to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, the show that is part of the Simply Luxurious Life online destination. Visit the blog, thesimplyluxuriouslife.com to find the show notes for each podcast episode, as well as much more weekly content to elevate your everyday and deepen your contentment. From recipes, motivational posts, videos of the cooking show series, style and decor inspiration, French and British inspired content, and the reader's favorite regular weekly post, this and that, which goes live on the blog every Friday. Now to today's episode. Welcome to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. I'm your host, Shannon Abels. And whether you're listening on your commute, exercising, working in the garden, or sitting down with a hot cup of tea or a cafe au lait, thank you for tuning in. Let's get started. Welcome to the 297th episode of The Simple Sophisticate. This is our last new episode of 2020 as we wrap up this year. Now, as we step into the new year, a brand new episode will be available on Monday, the 4th of January. And I will make sure to put the schedule for the remainder of season seven, because we start our seasons in September and they run through August. I'll put the schedule up on today's show notes so you can see when the new episodes are going to be aired. Now, moving forward, we are going to be airing two new episodes every single month. Now, you may be saying, why only two episodes? A couple things. Number one, I am diving in or finishing diving in, wanting time to give myself to finish a project that I began technically 10 years ago, but formally and officially this last spring. And I hope to bring it to you in 2000, early 2000, 2022. In order to do that, I need more time. But with that said, Every time that you have a Monday where there's not a new podcast episode, there is always a new blog post to begin the week on the blog, the Simply Luxurious Life.com. So if you're looking for weekly inspiration to start your week, whether it's on the podcast or on the blog, it's always going to be available. Now, with that, we are going to end this year well. And today's episode is all about the time that's called the between the years. I love that phrase. We're going to be talking about 10 ideas for making the most of between the years. And today's petit plaisir is a delicious, simple dinner idea that will satiate your taste buds and be easier to make than you may have thought and absolutely full of flavor. So stay tuned for what that recipe is at the end of today's show. But let's first get into what this show is all about today, the between the years time, that time right after Christmas, whether you celebrate it or not, and right before January 1st. I did not know this was a term, but there's all sorts of different terms that describe this. And it was brought to my attention last year when a reader shared with me that description. And I wrote a detailed post about exactly that time of year last year at this time. And I've included a link to that post because it details how I enjoyed spending that particular week. And then this winter, I received or purchased Beth Kempton's book, Calm Christmas and a Happy New Year. And she too savors this particular time of year. I want to share with you a quote from her book. She writes, have you noticed that something very special happens between Christmas and New Year each year? For a few days, a portal to another world opens up. Everything is quieter, less rushed, more gentle in this secret place. Peering through a doorway, I always imagine there will be snow, although the sky usually offers knitted fog and dull winter sunshine. Nevertheless, calm descends as we catch a glimpse of a slower life, away from all the deadlines and to-do lists. I call this time the hush, and I encourage you to savor it. Now, Beth Kempton lives in Devon, England. That's the description of the weather. And this book she published in 
uh, late 2019. So it's been around for two winter seasons. And I devoured the final third of the book because the final third is all about this last week of December. The first two thirds are all about preparing and savoring Christmas, whatever type of Christmas you celebrate in your own way that brings calm and comfort. Now, this particular time of year, this between the years time, in my mind and in my experience, is a soft place to rest. It's a window of time to catch one's breath, the space to fully see what was, what is, and what we wish it could be. Now, as I mentioned, I sat down to read this book this past weekend, and I went right to chapters seven through nine, and I devoured those three chapters in a couple of hours. Now, while I do enjoy Christmas, I much prefer the between the years time, perhaps because it is so nondescript and open to individual tailoring. Perhaps because in 2009, the idea of the Simply Luxurious Life blog came to be an actual place to share, write, connect, and dare to dream in real time. It was during that week, the Between the Years week, that that idea came to fruition. So of course I have a tender spot for it. But so too can this time leading up to Christmas, as Kempton's book inspires each of us to do. And in the future, my approach to Christmas may change as it is now quite simple. And up until 2020 was filled with work. However, in this particular year, I'm observing how it can be so much more and I hope it will be someday. One of the gifts given by 2020 in the midst of all the pain and all the loss and all the suffering is that in my life, I realized what living well feels like. And I emphasize feels like because I have known from a distance and momentarily in person what living well feels like. But this past year validated in vivid Technicolor what doing so day after day could enable to blossom and how it makes one truly feel. It's a deep contentment that is priceless. In the spirit of nurturing ourselves, healing ourselves, and opening a door to a better year in 2021, today's episode is shared with the intention of providing inspiration for you to do just that as you tailor the final week of the year, the between the years, to nurture you, heal you, Open your eyes to a better, more deeply contented 2021. And as I mentioned at the top of today's episode, inspired by my readers last year, I wrote a detailed post about the 13 things I do every year between the years. And also it introduces you to who I am in detail, as well as who this community, the Simply Luxurious Life community is. It's a detailed post and um, I, I... was excited to share it last year. It was warmly received. And if you would like to check it out to further the reading or the listening today, I highly recommend it. And the link again is on the show notes. So let's get into today's topic more deeply. Inspired by Beth Kempton's book, Calm Christmas, as well as additions of my own from my own life and experience, I want to first begin by highly recommending Calm Christmas and a Happy New Year, a little book of festive joy. Because Many readers have shared they choose to read her book again during the holidays when they come back around as a way to remind them to slow down, to focus on what matters most to them. And in turn, regarding the latter chapters that I mentioned, chapters seven through nine, they will read them just as that week approaches, just to help them better start the new year in their own way. So let me share with you 10 ideas for doing just that, just for you. First one is let spontaneity be your guide. While throughout the year, we may try and consciously so to limit the shoulds and replace them with natural inclinations, more healthy boundaries. Now, this last week is the time to put that into practice. This, the the, the good habit of listening to what we need, rest, curious pursuits, lovely, intimate conversations and self-exploration, whatever is dancing about in your mind, heed it. And it may just lead you to something beyond your wildest expectations. 
I speak from experience. This is a magical time. And it was without this time, I don't know if I would have ever come up with the idea of the blog and everything that it has turned into. So just sit still, listen, and then follow whatever comes forth. That's number one. Number two, put the technology away at least for a day. Yep, put the phone down, the iPad down, the podcasts away. I know that sounds ironic that I'm suggesting this, but sincerely, on your walk, instead of taking a podcast, let Mother Nature be your soundtrack. Not every time you go walking, but this particular week, give yourself and your mind that space. You have taken in so much information that's been helpful, inspiring, insightful, hysterical, serious, whatever it may be. Now, let yourself just percolate with everything the last 51 weeks has brought into your life. Let your energy be your guide for when to sleep and when to wake, when to eat and when to be. Feel your way through the day and observe at the end of it, of this tech-free day, how you feel, your energy, your peace of mind, your thoughts, etc. That's number two. Put the technology away at least for a day. Number three, plan a change of scenery, a getaway for the eyes and for the being. Whether you can or want to leave your home for a couple of nights and days, now keeping in mind that this year, 2020, it might be best to just remain home or in your local area, but choose to do something or follow a different daily routine that piques your interest and soothes your being. I personally love to escape to the coast. It's about three hours away. I'm able to have my own little cottage that's separate from everyone else. It's in a very small inn with very few people, and I can easily social distance. And the boys, my dogs especially, love the new ground to explore and sniff and, and just run around freely. Simply going a different direction on a trail or, or, or a path that you go on all the time. Go the opposite direction. I did that recently on a trail and when I go skiing, and I thought... I would know what it would look like going the other way, but I was wonderfully surprised that it felt brand new in so many ways. And it was just a lovely new eye-opening experience. So that's number three, plan a change of scenery, a getaway, something that allows the eyes and the being to feast upon something new. Number four, carve out a day entirely for you to get your life situated. Now, Kempton describes such a day as a sort out my life day, and it is apt and wholly rejuvenating when tended to fully. Essentially, it is a personal business day to get your affairs in order, money, files, budget, stationery for ease of correspondence, and clarity about financial responsibilities moving forward. Editing, noticing, improving, correcting, all simple tasks to improve clarity about where you stand financially and how well you are standing and how to either continue that sturdiness or improve upon it. Do you need to be making certain reoccurring payments for the service that you never use? Or can you stop that reoccurring payment and start up a different one that would feed your, your life that you're living now better. I was thinking about this recently. Um, a few of my subscriptions, I'm like, oh, I don't really watch that anymore. Or I don't read that magazine anymore. But then I realized, oh, I would really like to explore this particular scrip- subscription more. And so I thought, hmm, I can do that if I let go of this, whatever it is. And so it's just, the, again, the space to think about those kind of things. Other questions could be, how can you reduce your debt on one particular card faster? Can you, should you refinance? Which is something actually that we talked about last week on the blog. I wrote a post in detail sharing 13 ideas to explore to strengthen your financial foundation currently in 2020 and then creating a brighter and secure 2021. And I've linked that on today's show notes. But again, it's the space that you're giving yourself that enables you the opportunity to make these best decisions for yourself and feel confident after you've solidified them. So that's number four, carve out a day entirely for you to get your life situated. Number five, carve out an entire day to sort out your home. 
Now, in many ways, I feel a kindred connection to Kempton as her approach to how to relish these final days of the year align nearly exactly with my own. Her suggestion for a sort out your life day, as we mentioned in number four, and now in number five, sort out your home day, have been highly productive and have helped me in the years past. And I cannot recommend them more highly, but she has coined that phrase and I think it's just so perfect. A handful of her concrete suggestions are now going to be adopted by me this year happily to hopefully reduce unwanted, simple yet annoying stresses throughout the year. So for example, checking and replacing smoke alarm batteries. There's nothing like waking up at two o'clock in the morning to a screeching alarm bell that is your battery and your alarm, your fire alarm going off and it's on Thursday and you're exhausted from three previous days of work and you're like, ah, why didn't I do this some other time? So those simple things, they're not life altering or life ending, but they sure make a bit of a, a difference to the start of that day. Also cleaning out the fridge or attending to any semi or annual home maintenance jobs, which will free up time later in the year. So that's number five, carve out an entire day to sort out your home. Now I have two sponsors I want to introduce you to. And this first sponsor is hand-selected. I'm so excited to bring them to you. They are a small business and they offer wonderful shoes, perfect for snuggling in as you step into this between the year time and an exclusive discount just for you and the Simply Luxurious Life readers as well, only running till the end of 2020. So be sure to scoop it up. Here is the generous offer. Sent M driven by the message to give modern women a newfound sense of freedom and ease in their everyday lives. It's all about being uncompromising about quality footwear. And why compromise fashion for comfort? Santam shoes give modern women and men a sense of freedom and ease in their day-to-day lives. The shoes that allow me to feel this way have always had two principal things in common— comfort and craftsmanship. And Santam ensures that these values are the foundation for shoes you want to wear again and again, year after year. Santam's Italian factory is run by fourth generation artisans who consider creating an exceptional shoe a matter of family pride. And as a simple, sophisticated listener, you are given this opportunity to enjoy a 20% discount on their Cortina mules. Now, their Cortina mules can be worn indoor or outdoor, and they are for everyone. There are three different colors, and this promo code, Chow Simply Lux, is good from today until December 31st, 2020. I was excited to work with the founder of San Min to bring you this offer. It is a small business founded and managed by a woman with a clear vision of what women really want to wear when it comes to style and function. You may remember a couple weeks ago on this and that I included their fur lane slippers, which are Venetian slippers inspired by the gondolieria that paddle the canals of Venice so that they don't slip on their boats, but also don't scratch their boats as well. They're available in a handful of different colors in velvet. I immediately was drawn to them before I even knew who the business owner was and thoroughly fell in love with their style. My eyes are on the Bordeaux color as well as the yellow color. And there are so many different colors that you can check out from navy to verde to a light colored blue and orange. They're just lovely to wear around the house and give you that simple touch of luxury. So be sure to check out the entire site for shoes from Sant M. Use the promo code CHOW, Simply Lux, at C-I-A-O, simply, and then L-U-X, all one phrase, to save 20% off their Cortina mules. And I'll provide a link to her website on today's show notes, the simplyluxuriouslife.com slash podcast 297. The Simple Sophisticate is also sponsored by SaneBox. I don't know about you, but I have a lot of emails and being organized has helped me immensely to not feel so overwhelmed by all of our now more than ever online communication. And SaneBox is one way to help you organize your inbox. 
a simple service that analyzes your past behavior, which emails you open, which you responded to, how quickly, how often, et cetera, and determines importance of incoming emails without ever looking at the content, only by the headers. It moves unimportant emails out of the inbox into a separate folder called Sane Later and summarizes them in a digest. So what are some of these helpful features? Well, it will help you sort and declutter your inbox automatically. Thank you. <laughs> that initial same box purge can be very powerful for people when you first start your account. And then the program allows you to manage them daily from there. And get this, you can even schedule breaks from receiving any new email with do not disturb. Unsubscribe from unwanted emails with just one click and snooze non-urgent emails for later. And you can also track and get notified when someone has not replied. So many helpful ways to just give yourself some control over your inbox and thus your pro productivity and your ability to respond well when you do respond or when you compose your emails. Inbox zero is a thing of the past. It's nearly impossible to have zero emails in your inbox. We're also inundated with email now that it's no longer about responding to everything. It's about responding only to the important things, the messages that truly matter. And that's where Samebox comes in. Think of it as an EMT for your email. As messages flow in, Samebox does the triage for you, sifting only the important emails into your inbox and directing all the other distracting stuff into your Sane Later folder. So you know what messages to pay attention to now and what stuff you can get to later on. It has a nifty feature such as the same black hole where you can drag messages from annoying senders you never want to hear from again and sane reminders to ping you if someone hasn't replied to your email by a certain date. Best of all, you can use Samebox with any email client or phone anywhere you check your email. Now, as a simple, sophisticated listener, you can magically remove distractions from your inbox with a free two-week trial. Visit samebox.com slash sophisticate today to start your free trial and get a $25 credit. That's samebox, S-A-N-E-B-O-X.com slash sophisticate. Again, that's samebox.com slash sophisticate to get a free two-week trial and get a $25 credit. Welcome back. Let's dive into the five remaining ideas for making the most of the between the year time. Number six, give yourself a me day. Void of any have tos, designate a day to fully go where your curiosity, your predilections, your body and mind need you to go. Usually my me day, if I'm at the coast, which I will be this year, involves visiting a bookshop perhaps an antique or secondhand shop, multiple long walks are taken on the sand, listening and witnessing the waves rise and recede, preparing a simple seafood dish paired with a glass of white wine. I turn on a cozy British or French program and not once do I peer at the clock. So find a day, a day that's going to be yours and make it so and savor it. That's number six. Number seven, spent in an afternoon or morning checking in with your life, reflecting, recalibrating, reaffirming, or reforming, or any or all of the four mentioned. What will be let go, planning momentous events, giving your life space, honoring your heart's path, honoring the path of those you share your life with. Follow Kempton's Life Map of the Year template. I highly recommend printing out Beth Kempton's Life Map of the Year template. It's in her book. It's also linked on the show notes. She has it on our website, so you can print it off as well. And I will honestly share freely that I'm not usually one of those people who... Um, will follow directions when an author says, fill this in, um, complete this written task before you come back to this chapter or whatever. Because I usually, what I'll do is I'll just do it in my own way. And I'm inspired by the directive, but I just will do it in my own way. But again, Kempton speaks my language and her approach to between the years. And I found this particular template incredibly helpful to visualizing the entire past year chronologically, breaking down the energy and cause and effects which resulted and overall, just see the themes that emerge from the year. It was very helpful, very simple to do. So much can happen in a year that we can sometimes forget what we were worried about, 
what brought us delight, what brought us relief, and everything in between. And so I've linked her template on the show notes. And I would encourage you, if you're interested, to print it out, discover a treasure or two as to how you might want to adjust your journey going forward into 2021. I know mine was glaringly obvious. (laughs) And um, it really just maybe will confirm something too that you have been wondering about. So that's number seven, spend an entire afternoon or morning checking in with your life. Number eight is read chapter eight of Beth Kempton's book titled simply Reflecting. You'll discover oodles of reflective questions offering the opportunity for you to answer and explore your responses. And your honesty is the key thing in order to have a better year moving forward. So I'll just leave it at that. Read chapter eight. Number nine is revolve rather than reinvent yourself. Here is a quote from Kempton. Besides being a dynamic and powerful call to arms, the word revolution from the Latin revolver roll back invites us to sweep away the layers of expectation, worry, conformity, convention, even comfort, and see what is waiting to be born this new year. Instead of making random resolutions, we will practice nourishing rituals. Instead of setting ourselves unrealistic goals, we will articulate beautiful dreams and then work out how to bring them to life. Shedding the layers of the world that don't fit us well because they constrict, limit, constrain, or inhibit our life force from being expressed and reveled in each day of our lives. This is why we must revolve rather than reinvent. We are already ourselves holy if we would only share ourselves with the world. That's the gift we can give ourselves in this last week of the year. How are you conforming? How are you limiting? How are you constricting? How are you getting in your own way if only you had the space to see it? You have a community here at the Simple Sophisticate and the Simply Luxurious Life of people who are all daring and bravely exploring the life they want to live because it aligns with their gifts and their talents and their priorities, and they're brave enough to not need approval and applause as they go forward. We have a small community, but it is a a sincere community. And there's just enough for us to say, you can do this and it's worth it. Why? It's deep contentment that you'll find. And it's not prescriptive. You can't do it the exact way I've done it. And and, and I can't do it the exact way you've done it. So as she says, be gentle with yourself. Revolve instead of reinvent. You are already there. You exist. You are enough. You are everything. You just need to know who that is and enjoy the discovery. Delight in it. That's number nine. Last but not least, be honest about what you yearn for. Kempton helpfully brings readers to the awareness regarding what we think we want versus what we actually want. So for example, we may think we want a large family or children, lots of children, but when we explore more deeply and honestly, perhaps what we may actually be yearning for is the love, the community, a sense of feeling needed and being able to nurture others. It doesn't mean that we cannot have a large family, But having a large family does not guarantee such an outcome. The crucial honesty you must have with yourself is why you are seeking or being drawn to what you are being drawn to. A place of permanency brings peace for my mind in order for me to be able to create and to let my mind wander, not being worried about the rent being raised, the landlord visiting my home every six months to make sure I am caring for my rental, something reminiscent of a parent checking in on a child. I don't want that. My independence in this instance, my feeling of being grounded is what enables me to fly and explore and to be more comfortable with the unknown. Again, this is what I yearn for and why I yearn for it. Yours will be unique to you. Enjoy the journey of exploration of yourself and what tugs at your heart. So number 10 is be honest about what you yearn for. The between the years time, a space and time to find hope for the new year to come. It exists and we can find it. And when we do, 
our personal new year has amazingly bright potential. To view any of the links we just talked about, visit the show notes to simplyluxuriouslife.com slash podcast 297. I've linked the post that I talked about that I wrote last year, how I spend the time that is between the years, the 13 ingredients, and an introduction to who I am, as well as who the Simply Luxurious Life community is. That is linked on the blog show notes. Now, before I get to today's petite plaisir, if you are wanting to explore more of the Simply Luxurious Life community, the first day of every single month, I have a video series, a conversation, a cup of moments is what I call it, that is exclusively available only to top tier subscribers on the blog. This is an intimate conversation that I share either in my house or wherever I find myself in the world at that time. And I share more detailed thoughts. I answer your questions. I pose a question to the group and then the group will share and have a conversation in the comment section that is only available to top tier subscribers to comment and read and engage. Last month alone, we had back and forths all month with over 120 different comments and the suggestions and the ideas and the inspiration that come out of that conversation, not just from what I share, but what other subscribers share with one another from around the world. Um, it's been lovely to hear and explore and read and inspiring to me as well. So be sure to check out how to become a subscriber. There are two different tiers. Top tiers are the ones who have exclusive access to a cup of moments. And there are three different price plans. So I'll provide a link to that on the blog. And um, we have a petite plaisir to get to. And I'll be right back with just that. <music> This week's Petit Plaisir is a simple soup recipe that your taste buds will thank you for. Now, I have been trying to incorporate more soups into my meal repertoire, year-round soups. Now, this is a goal I'm still working on, and there's something that I love about soups, but yet for some reason I haven't brought them into my everyday eating repertoire um, for quite, I mean, up until, you know, just recently, the last couple of years. I remember sitting down in the end of June, 2018 in Provence and we sat down and we enjoyed this cool cucumber and dill soup. Not only was it beautiful to look at, but it was so refreshing and fresh and embodied summer, early summer, the start of the new season. And I remember thinking how simple and luxurious. And I don't mean to be punny about that, but my, but truly it was that simple and it was luscious. And so I've been slowly adding and, and exploring more soups into my cooking repertoire. And today's soup is a classic. You can't go anywhere without the classic soups. And if you just make them with the right spices and the right flavors and the right herbs, they can be so satiating and so delicious. Perhaps it is the ritual requirement of, of sitting down and enjoying a soup. You must slow down as not to dribble any of your meal upon your attire. You must slow down to enjoy and discern the flavors as they are not as easily discernible with the eye. Either way, I am gradually exploring and enjoying more widely this journey through soups. And so today I'm sharing with you a classic tomato soup. Yes, indeed. <laughs> I paired mine um, with a grilled cheese, but of course a French grilled cheese, a croque madame, bien sûr. But you too can enjoy this simple soup. I adapted it from a New York Times recipe and I, number one, reduced the amount so I didn't have tons of soup in my fridge for weeks on end. So it's enough for two people to enjoy for two or three days, so still quite a bit. Um, so six servings, six to eight servings. And I also changed um, some of the... Um, the flavoring components um, as well. Not too much, but enough. It was mine and it suited my taste. And it is luscious and it is rich and is full of tomato flavor. So I came home last Friday after the last school day of the year and I made this soup and I paired it with a croque madame with some gruyere and some prosciutto bechamel sauce and then added a glass of red wine and it was a wonderful way to end the week. That's luscious and rich 
tomato soup. The recipe is on the show notes, the simply luxurious life.com slash podcast 297. So this is how simple the recipe is. You're going to take two sweet tomatoes, so two medium sized tomatoes, dice them up. You're going to find your best unsalted butter <laughs> into a Dutch oven or a large saucepan on the stovetop over medium heat. Put the butter and the onions for 20 minutes. Just make sure the Everything gets mixed together blah, 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 and you can kind of go off and do what you need to do. Check in on every once in a while. Just make sure that the onion gets just about to translucent. Then you're going to add a fourth a cup of flour to soak up that liquid. Don't let it brown the onions. So this is about for three minutes. Just mix the flour into the onion and butter mixture. And as soon as all the mi- the moisture is absorbed, add just about everything everything else on the ingredients list except for the last item, which is half and half. Half and half will go in the very, very end after it's all done just to finish it, soften it, add a little bit of luxurious flavor. So you're going to add, once the flour has been absorbed, two whole 28-ounce cans of diced tomatoes and their juices. Add three-fourths cup chicken broth, an eighth of a cup sugar, a tablespoon of fleur de sel. Remember, flavor, flavor, flavor. <laughs> three-fourths teaspoon freshly ground black pepper, and I like to add one teaspoon of celery seed. So find that celery seed. It's great in sauces. I actually used it in my scallop recipe in season three of the Simply Luxurious Kitchen with a little bit of sherry. I loved ha- having that additional celery flavor. Let that all cook. So bring it gently to a boil, and then as soon as the bubbles start to bounce around, reduce it to simmer, and simmer between 20 to 30 minutes. Stir it every once in a while so the tomatoes don't stick to the bottom, and just uncovered, let it simmer for 20 to 30 minutes. Then you're basically done, except you're going to add one-third cup of half and half. Mix it in. Make sure the heat returns because the half and half will likely cool down the soup just a little bit. So you want to mix it in and make sure it's back to temp. And then for a nice finish, use an immersion blender or a stand-up blender just to incorporate it into the lovely soup consistency that you prefer. Um, I do like doing that. It just kind of brings all the flavors together. And then serve it. And that's it. So from beginning to end, it's about an hour. And you're sitting down with a lovely tomato soup. I hope you've enjoyed this week's Petit Plaisir, where each week ideas are shared to make the everyday all the more enjoyable. Tune in at the end of each episode where I'll recommend a book, a film, a show, a recipe, anything that is a simple pleasure to satiate your sophisticated taste. And the recipe can be found and printed by visiting the show notes, the simplyluxuriouslife.com slash podcast 297. I want to thank you for tuning in to today's show. It's just about Christmas, but not quite. And so I made up a holiday playlist that I call the Quiet Holiday Playlist because it's full of jazz and classical favorites for about two hours worth of listening. Um, There are only two songs that actually have lyrics and they're classical songs, one by Nat King Cole, a Christmas song, and then one by the Cambridge Singers. So I think you'll find it very soothing, something you can turn on in the background and just sway away the day as you get ready for the holidays and usher in the new year. And uh, I'll link to that on the show notes, but it's also up on the blog. And you can find all my playlists on Spotify. Just search the simplyluxuriouslife.com. I think I have seven or eight playlists for you if you want them. Anyway, thank you so much for tuning in this year. I'm excited to step into the new year with brand new episodes beginning Monday, January 4th. In the meantime, stop by the blog for our final week of the year is all about the roundup of the best post best episodes of the year as we celebrate our 11th year of being online. Bonjour, happy holidays and happy new year.